Hi there and welcome to Victor Unit Video 2. Um, we're going to talk about some different things we can do with these vectors, um, starting with the angle between two vectors. And then we're going to talk about orthogonal vectors and unit vectors. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. The angle between two vectors, as if, if we were looking at this um, from a graphical standpoint, and I were to draw two vectors, um, I could be able to calculate the angle that fell between those two vectors. If they were even um, in directions like this, we'd be able to calculate the direction or the angle between those two vectors. So that's um, one of the things we're going to look at, but we're going to do it in algebraic, uh, algebraically. Um, we're also going to determine if two vectors are orthogonal, and we'll discuss in a moment here what orthogonal means. And lastly, we will define a unit vector. Okay, so we're going to work here on finding the angle between two vectors. If theta is the angle between the two non-zero vectors, u and v, remember we're using our bold face u and v to represent vectors, um, where the angle falls between 0 and 180 degrees, then we have this formula here. So this gives us our angle. And um, we're in order to solve for theta, because theta is our ultimate goal here, I'm actually going to divide by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v onto both sides. Okay, and this will leave me with, I'm actually going to switch it around here and have the cosine of theta is going to be equal to u dot v over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. Once I come up with a value for my right hand side, once this is just a numerical value that I've calculated using my calculator, then I'm going to be able to use the cosine inverse operation to find theta. So let's begin with two uh, two different vectors. We will start with u to be 3 comma 4 and v will be the vector negative 2 comma 3. And let's go ahead and calculate our um, angle between. So that will start with the dot product in the numerator is 3 times negative 2 plus 4 times 3. That's going to give us a scalar. And in the denominator we're going to get a magnitude uh, the magnitude of u is going to be 3 squared plus 4 squared square rooted times the square root of negative 2 squared plus 3 squared. Please be cautious here with the negative when you go ahead and enter that into the calculator that it's in parentheses or just calculate it in your head so you guys have mathematical abilities. In the numerator here I get negative 6 plus 12 is 6. In the denominator this first one is 9 plus 16 which is 25 so the square root of 25. And the other one I'm going to get 9 plus, the square, uh, plus 4 is going to be the square root of 13. So as I go ahead and type this in my calculator, I'm actually probably going to want to type um, to avoid as many parentheses as possible, which I think is the easiest way to do it. Uh, you can type the numerator and then do 6 divided by your answer. If that didn't make any sense to you, then go ahead and just make sure that you're using parentheses in the denominator here to open up the entire thing. So it would be like 6 divided by, and then you know that's going to be 5 square root of 13, but you have to open these parentheses in the denominator first. Um, so go ahead and type that in, and let's see what we get. So I have 6 divided by parentheses 5 times the square root of 13. Uh, and I get 0.33282 and it goes on. And I, I do not want to ever round. Again, we're going to keep that number in our calculator and because I'm looking for the cosine of theta that equals that number, I want to take the cosine inverse of my answer and that gives me 70 degrees approximately 70.6 degrees. So if I were to round to one decimal place there. Let's try one more of those. I'm going to switch pen colors so you can see the difference. So let's try another one. For this one let's do u equals the vector 3 negative 1 and vector v is 7 
um, times 5 or 7, 5, excuse me. <laughs> and let's find the angle that falls between those two vectors. So I will have the dot product of the numerator 3 times 20 or th times 7 plus negative 1 times 5 divided by our magnitude 3 squared plus negative 1 squared times the square root of 7 squared plus 5 squared. And let's find this one. So this is 21 minus 5, so I get a 16 in the numerator. And the denominator, this is going to be the square root of 10. And then I'll have 49 plus 25, which is 74, so the square root of 74. When you multiply square roots, you can actually multiply them together. So this is, this is actually the square root of 740. And that might be a nicer way to enter it. So you would do 16 divided by the square root of 740, uh, and that would leave you with very few parentheses needed. So I'll calculate that. 16 divided by the square root of 740, and it gives me approximately 0.588. I'm going to take the cosine inverse of that answer so that I can find the angle, and that the angle here, so that was theta, theta equals, or approximately, uh, if we went to one decimal, I'd actually be at 54 degrees because it came up to be 53.97. All right, we got two more things to do. Let's move on. Okay, so let's determine if two vectors are orthogonal. What does orthogonal mean, though? Well, two vectors are said to be orthogonal if the angle between them is a right angle. So if we did the calculations to find the angle between two vectors that we just worked on, so that formula was the cosine of theta equals the dot product of u and v over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v, and we calculated it and we did cosine inverse and it came up to be 90 degrees, then we would say these two vectors are orthogonal. So if we wanted to determine if two vectors were orthogonal, then all we would need to actually find is that the dot product is zero. Here's why. If my dot product is zero, my numerator would be zero. If my numerator was zero, the entire value would be zero. And where is the cosine of theta equal to zero? At 90 degrees. So we would determine that the two vectors with a dot product of zero to be orthogonal. So let's skip all the extra work of calculating the denominator because if the numerator comes up to be zero, we've already got our value, zero. Here goes. So let's try this for two examples. We're going to do u, vector u is 3 comma 4, and vector v is negative 2 comma 3. Let's determine if these two vectors are orthogonal. My dot product would be 3 times negative 2 plus 4 times 3. That's negative 6 plus 12 is a positive 6. These are not orthogonal. Let's try another one. How about 3u <laughs> is equal to 3 negative 1 and v is equal to 721. My dot product is 3 times 7 plus negative 1 times 21. Well, that's 21 minus 21. That's 0. So these two vectors are orthogonal. All right, what else can we do with this idea? Well, what if I had a missing value? And I wanted to determine if the vectors were orthogonal. Rather, if, rather than determine if they were orthogonal, I wanted to make them orthogonal. For example, if I have the first vector to be 8, negative 2, and my second vector to be 5, comma, k, what is the value that would make these two orthogonal? Well, to do that, I would want to set their dot product equal to 0 so that I force the result to be 0. So my dot product is 8 times 5 plus negative 2 times k, and I want them to be orthogonal, so I'm setting it equal to 0. This would be 40 
plus negative 2 times k equals 0. And I solve negative 2k equals negative 20 and k equals 10. So the value of k that makes these two vectors orthogonal is 10. Let's try another one. First vector is 6, 1 quarter. The second vector is k, 18. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and create my dot product, 6k plus 1 fourth times 18, and I want that to be equal to 0. 6k equals, I'm going to calculate my 18 divided by 4, and I'm not going to freak out that it's a fraction or a decimal, so plus 4.5 equals 0. I'm going to subtract it, 6k equals negative 4.5, and divide that by 6. So the k value that makes these two vectors orthogonal is negative 0.75, or negative 3 quarters. All right, last idea here is to define a unit vector. A unit vector is said to have a magnitude of 1, so it has a a length of 1. What we're going to do here is we're actually going to determine if the value of k, or determine the value of k so that the vector is a unit vector. So we're going to use the idea we just did in the last one with orthogonal, but this time we're going to use magnitude. So I'm going to start with my um, u is 6 comma k and I want to find the value of k that makes this have a magnitude of 1. Well, my magnitude is the square root of 6 squared plus k squared, and I want this to equal 1. So I'm going to square both sides. I'm going to subtract my 36 that's over here. So I have k squared equals negative 35, and I'm going to take the square root of both sides. When I go to take the square root of negative 35, I realize I'm in an imaginary situation. That's not going to work because my vectors are in the real plane. I need real numbers. So it is not possible to make this a unit vector. Let's look at another example. This one is negative 1 fourth comma k. So once again we're going to take the square root of negative 1 fourth squared plus k squared equals 1. Please remember that when you take the square root of a sum you cannot cancel the squareds. Do you do that? You're going to get the wrong answer every time. So you must square both sides. Squaring the 1 doesn't change anything. But this is negative 1 fourth squared plus k squared equals 1. 1 squared, negative 1 fourth squared, is negative 1 16th, or positive 1 16th. So I get k squared, that's 1 16th down there, I'm going to subtract it from 1, which leaves me with 15 sixteenths, and when I go to take the square root, I actually get two values of k that would work. The square, um, plus or minus the square root of 15 over 4. And that's from taking the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. You must include the plus or minus or you're missing half of your answer. Go ahead and review those things we've talked about here, making sure that you know how to find the angle between, that you know what orthogonal means and how to calculate it, and that you know what a unit vector is and how to um, find the case so that we actually can create a unit vector.